We're live, welcome to the second ever Longing stream. This is uh, a game called The Longing. Uh, apparently it takes a 400 days to finish this game. As you can see, there's a counter up, up top of the screen. Uh, I plan to do this every day uh, with different topics on whatever I've done recently, pretty much in the last 24 hours. It has been three days since the last one. Uh, usually it's the kind of break I do not want to have, but I had to because today is a big one. Today we're talking serious subjects um, that I don't want to talk about serious subjects, nor will I ever, almost, you know, one in 40 days, let's say, will be slightly serious, and it will be related never to politics, never to anything inflammatory. It'll always be about something in the news or something that I'm passionate about. In this case, it's about a YouTuber I really like, called Chris Stuckman, that I really respect, who's a movie reviewer who's been doing it for years. Uh, we will be playing the game at the same time, my apologies. By the way, they put us right back where we were when we left. And when I left this game, I was completely lost. Like, completely lost. Uh, the entire premise of the game is that, you know, every few days, a new path unlocks, and you slowly, over the course of 400 days, discover this cave, and the story, and etc, etc. So, but yeah, today's a big one. So yeah, Chris Stuckman, and he made a video called, uh, damn it. Yeah, how I left the Jehovah's Witnesses to pursue filmmaking. Okay? And... Like, I would, like, stop this right now and watch that video, because I'm just going to pretty much talk about it a little bit, and, um, because of how incredible it was. It is a serious topic, and because of me discussing the video, um, you will happen upon, you know, just general thoughts about myself in terms of religious beliefs and sexual orientation. Um, so, I mean, it's nothing big, right? But I do want to get into it, so, um... So because I'm going to do that this week, as well as talk about Craven the Hunter and how Craven the Hunter becomes a superhero in this book uh, to counteract the seriousness of the main topic, I want to preview rapid fire what's coming up in the next coming days, just so that you know that it will almost certainly never be as serious as this. So, big time, here we go, rapid fire, we're talking comic books right now, Doomsday Clock. Doomsday Clock is a sequel to Watchmen. I am literally one issue away from finishing it. It is a masterpiece. Of course, not as good as Watchmen, but I'll talk about this probably tomorrow. Same thing with tomorrow. This will be tomorrow's big topic. It is the best Batman comic I have read in probably a decade. Like, it's hard to say if it's my favorite ever, but it's certainly top three, if not top two. The Batman Who Laughs, incredible. Uh, the best new villain of Batman, that's guaranteed. So we'll talk about this in Doomsday Clock tomorrow, big time. Um, then here we're gonna go really quick rapid fire. Justice League, uh, I had to read Batman Who Laughs to get to Justice League because it's the same writer. Uh, they're building up an epic story to the newest DC event, which just happened, called Dark Knight's Death Metal. Just finished. So I have to finish this to get to that. Uh, it's really good. Can't wait to talk about it. Speaking of Batman, I got two Batman here, which is crazy. I have been reading Batman, finishing the most recent Batman run of Note, written by Tom King. Um, so he, he took Bane, like Bane was his main, main squeeze. As you can see, this is volume 11, there's 12. So City of Bane, this is like the big finale. Uh, once I finish this, I will talk about the whole thing. Uh, very excited, it's very good, of course. And then after that, I'm gonna get into Batman Universe. It's only one, there's no more than this, but it's written by Bri Brian Michael Bendis, one of the big writers, and uh, like, Perfect example of what he's done is Miles Morales. Spider-Man Miles Morales on PS5, Enter the Spider-Verse, uh, one of the best animated movies of all time, the best Spider-Man movie of all time, wouldn't exist without this man. So he wrote this uh, six-issue uh, Batman, Batman Universe story. Can't wait to read it. Uh, so you have my thoughts. Lumberjanes, real quick. Love it. In extremely funny. Love the art. So much energy. It's going to be uh, adapted into an animated series either on Netflix or Amazon, I'm not sure. But the hype is real. This is volume two. I'll have to get into it. I've also been reading Female Thor. Uh, it's Female Thor, you know, straight up. Uh, it's a it's a big epic. So it starts with Thor, becomes Female Thor. Uh, I'll tell you all about it. Can't wait for Thor 4. I forget the name of the movie. But Natalie Portman is going to be Thor. So this is why this is important. And finally, this I'll talk about as well tomorrow. Curse Words, which is an indie series from Charles Soule. Uh, he did a... A bunch of anyway he's a good good writer same thing with the ryan brown artist great stuff only one issue away from the end not amazing you know what i mean it's just a good comic so i'll talk about it tomorrow that's that's just comics baby 
Uh, in terms of film, I'm watching in the upcoming days four animated films to make a list that is definitive as the best animated movies of 2020. Back to the game, I apologize. I should put this in just chatting. I was really thinking of doing that, uh, so I probably will. So, so movies, yeah, the Willy Bullies, Willy, Willy something on Netflix about this family of redheads. Looks cool. Can't wait to watch it. Uh, Shaun the Sheep 2, which is Shaun the Sheep, Farmageddon. Same thing, it's just fun. It's Ardman, the guys who did Wallace and Gromit and whatnot. So it should be cool. Um, a Whisker Away, which is an anime film on Netflix. Apparently very good. Uh, a Whisker Away class, like, it's a, there's a cat in it. Don't know what it's about, but we'll find out. And the big one, which is Wolf Walkers on Apple. It's an exclusive from an Irish animation studio. They did Song of the Sea, which is one of my recent favorites in the last few years. Extremely excited about that. Could be easy top five of the year. Could be top three, we'll find out. So that's in the coming days, and as well as animated shows, I'm going to be starting Castlevania Season 3 on Netflix, big big time, and Blood of Zeus, also on Netflix, which is like a, a Greek uh, Western anime uh, with uh, all the Greek gods in like a battle royale setting. Again, I don't know much about, can't wait to start that, and we'll see where that goes. In game, same thing, I'm going to be finishing Valhalla, I just started Ace Attorney Investigations 2 with uh, Miles Edgeworth. Uh, I'm close to finishing Lego Batman 2 and uh, a few other things that I'll talk about in the coming days. So that's your preview for the coming days. Took longer than I thought, as usual. But uh, let's go into the meat of it, baby. Chris Tuckman. So yeah, Chris Tuckman, who... Like, I'm subscribed to him, but I don't watch most of his videos because, you know, I'm gonna watch the movies he's gonna talk about. I usually click on the reviews where he reviews a bad film, in this case he did like Wonder Woman recently, had like a million views, because of course everybody ran to the internet to to uh, to vent on that film. I talked about it on the last longing episode, the first one. So if you want my thoughts for on Wonder Woman, go there. But uh, his most recent, by the way, okay, these carvings seem to show a rather crude map of the kingdom. It would take some time to decipher it. Hell yeah, because by the way, I've never been to this room. So anyway, we're going up is what we're doing, because looks looks enticing. By the way, the speed of this game, like this is it, like this, this is why I'm thinking of putting it in just chatting. So yeah, like I said, he released a video called How I Left the Jehovah's Witnesses to become, uh, to pursue filmmaking, okay? Now, he didn't write to pursue YouTube, he wants to be a filmmaker. And this is a 57 minute, uh, I would say confession, it's, it's, it's a personal confession that was extremely hard to do and could not be understated how brave and how hard it must have been for him to do that video. And again, I implore you, if, if you're watching this, stop it. Stop this right now. Watch the video. Because whatever I say will just be paraphrasing what he said. I can't do a 57 minutes on, on, on this man's life. Like, that's that's his, you know, perspective to tell. So, but I have to talk about it because it was so impactful and so important. And, uh... After I watched it, I was so, you know, it's the kind of thing that blows you away in the same way a fantastic documentary would. It gives you knowledge as well as perspective. Okay, these stairs should lead to the caves beyond the earthen palace. I don't think the king would like it if I ventured out there. Okay, so he doesn't want me to go. We're going to try, but chances are we're going to get stopped, so it's going to take forever just to get up these steps. So let's get into it, okay? So it's just him sitting in front of his camera like he always does for his movies his reviews. It's always the same setup. There's nothing special about it. Yes, there's editing. Yes, there's footage from uh, some marketing footage that the Jehovah's Witnesses use. There's some footage from his old videos. But it mostly is just him talking to the camera. Talking about how, as a child, he was brought up to be a Jehovah's Witness. You know, which are the the people that come knocking to your door. They're, they're the door-to-door -door religion salesmen, if you will. That's how I've always seen them. Uh, some countries don't have him, it's mostly an America-Canada thing. Again, I might be speaking out of turn, like most of everything I say. Uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm as ignorant as anybody on the subject, other than the video he's shown me, which is pretty much him telling us what it is, you know, in, in true depth, because he grew up in it. Point is, uh, he, he said a few things that were, I wrote down, because I'm like, man, you know, these are intense statements. Uh, the biggest, uh, the biggest of which is, the Jehovah Witnesses are apparently, in his words, the least inclusive religion. Now, of course, that's a big statement, but he was in it, so 
I'll believe his word, but in a world of 200 religions, of course, it's probably not the least inclusive one on Earth, but it has to be up there because he wouldn't say that. Meaning they are homophobic, they are transphobic, they are, you know, art phobic even, where, you know, he was being, he was being, um, pretty much punished for watching films, which is insane, you know, when you think about it. One of my favorite stories, real quick, which is somewhat humorous but extremely dark in context, is that he, he watched and reviewed the movie Thor from Marvel, Marvel's Thor. Thor is a pagan god, right? So he got taken from the group and put into this locked room, which he said he went multiple times, where you meet with the elders, which are pretty much your priests or people of importance in your community, in your church or whatever place of, you know, where Jehovah Witnesses uh, come together. By the way, I couldn't come up on the right side. I, go, I gotta go all the way around just to grab this item. Ridiculous. So he's put into this locked room and they're like, why did you watch this movie? Why, why did you review this movie? And he knew for a fact that one of the people that were questioning him on watching Marvel's Thor also watched it with his family either a day or two days before. And he told them, he told that guy, like, you can help me right now. And he didn't do nothing, you know, they, they were just there to judge and criticize. So it's hard to start at the beginning because, again, it's his life, you know. Me, me talking about his life is kind of out of turn, but the point is, as a youth, he was brought upon this religion to believe that uh, everybody was going to die. There was an apocalypse coming that everybody was going to die and the only ones that would be uh, entered upon, you know, kingdom of heaven or meet God or whatever would be the uh, non-sinners, right? Sinning is anything. Could be from a swear word to even masturbation. Stuff that would seem uh, simple or banal to us, uh, to them, would feel like like that's it. I'm going to hell. I, like I'm going to burn. I'm going to die because I said the F word, right? He said that as a kid. He let one slip out. It's so easy to let a swear slip out. He said fuck by accident. And he thought, he literally thought, that he was dead like my life is over imagine being a child and like thinking your life is done like you're gonna burn in hell for eternity and you are doomed to suffering just because he let one slip out you know what i mean that's how crazy the brainwashing is and how they felt he he said i felt endlessly ashamed by the way i can't move right now i thought i could move forward but i can't so unfortunately i can't even pick up that item i have to go okay now i can it was just a glitch so endlessly ashamed. I wrote that down. I just wrote down endlessly ashamed. Because that's how he described feeling as a youth within this... Uh, I'm going to use the word religion here. So just so, so we have an understanding. Ooh, part of my instrument. If I gather all of them, I'll be able to make a musk at home. T two parts is great. By the way, let's check this door because they'll probably tell us when it'll open. If I'm guessing, this will be at least 100 days. Let's see. Big moment here. This old door is opening quite slowly. It will need at least two hours. Damn it, we'll have to come back in two hours. We're gonna have to come back in two hours. So we'll walk around, and then uh, once I'm done, we'll come back here. And uh, for, yeah, two hours. What time is it? Damn, I gotta put an alarm for this. It's crazy. 7.30, 7.30, I'll be back. Just for this stupid door, it's ridiculous. But there might be something cool behind there. And we don't know if it's gonna shut back down after we, anyway, regardless. So, and, uh, okay, give me a sec here, because I wrote down the words he was spoken, so I don't go too much all over the place, and to be honest, I don't want to waste too much time on this, because again, go watch that video. Uh, so, if you do anything out of turn for this religion, you, can, you become an apostle. An apostle is somebody who is completely rejected, and his is frowned upon. And he said, making this video, Chris Stuckman, making the video he made for YouTube means... He will never speak to his father again. That's just a fact. That's just how it is. It's what he believes. You never know. His father might change his mind. But as of now, as of the facts, him releasing a YouTube video about his own experience in life means he will never speak to his father again. Because th the religion will force his father to shun his own son because he told his opinion and, and experiences on YouTube, making the Jehovah's Witness religion 
look bad in the process, right? Anything that makes the religion look bad, makes you an apostle, makes you rejected. He told this story about his best friend. His best friend, who he would spend years with, talked to him every day, and um, once they they told him, they told his best friend that they couldn't hang out with Chris anymore. And the last experiences that he has with his best friend at the time was a voice message. 17 seconds, he said. 17 seconds, this message was. And again, I'm paraphrasing here, but the message was just, look, they told me I can't talk to you anymore because of what you've done, which I believe was movie reviews at the time. Just movie reviews. He continued to do what he was passionate about. And because of that, I cannot speak to you anymore. This will be the last you ever hear from me. Click. Again, paraphrasing big time. But that's brutal. Your best friend of years. Years. You know this guy inside and out. And in 17 seconds, it is over. And to, to, to never be heard of, spoken to ever again. Again, it's, this, the, the, it's impossible to understand, right? But you can, you can take what he says. Anyway, so he has a story about being bullied at school. Because to, there's a hierarchy in this religion. So to move up in the hierarchy, you need to do field work, as they say. And the field work entails going door to door. Like that's the whole, we know Jehovah's Witnesses because of that. Because they come to your door at two o'clock in the afternoon while you're streaming and you're like, ah, and then you open the door and you see it's them. You know it right away and you're like, ah, some people slammed the door, right? One out of two doors is a extremely negative reaction towards these people, you know? That's just a fact. And apparently you need to do 70 hours, 70 hours per week of door to door field work to like move up in the hierarchy. 70 hours. That's almost double the full time of doing a job where you literally get a door slammed in your face. Like every two doors, every two doors you get a door slammed in your face, probably insulted, probably like, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy. And uh, so, so he was bullied at school as a kid. He was at the cafeteria eating at the table and one of the kids at the table told him by the way if you come to my house if you come to my house i will grab my dad's shotgun again this is a child being told that if he goes to that kid's house he's gonna get shot by a shotgun it's crazy and again this is this is a movie reviewer on the internet it just it just baffled me it, that's why i wrote that's why the title is the bravery of chris duckman all of that he's told is a, of his own volition he said it himself he's wanted to do this video for 10 years you know so, so the, ah, gets me, it gets me, because it's, it's powerful stuff, you know what I mean? Oof. By the way, they have no Christmas, no Halloween, no birthdays. How sad is that? That's extremely sad. Anyway. <sighs> anyway, so he said that after he lost all the connections to the, to the, the community aspect of it, because that's the thing, right? Once you're in, you, you feel like a family. It's like one big family, everybody helps each other. Uh, even though you're limited in a lot of things but once he got shunned because of his movie reviews he said it felt more like a cult you know people would look at him judge him and like you know like don't talk to that guy you know he, he's bad he's whatever he's done they, they won't explicitly say but it is known who is shunned by everybody else it's real bad i can't even imagine that feeling and uh so i think that's pretty much it like in terms of the big stuff that like affected me and how like insane of a perspective and of the bravery it took to make that video you know i can't understate that enough and again you should go see it so look up chris stuckman look up that video and like of course there's huge silver lining li linings in this because he made that video uh chris stuckman like not only do we know more about the religion but we also know his true purpose in life you know like he reviews movies on YouTube, but that is just a way to get to actual filmmaking. That's why he named the title of his video like that. You know, leaving the Jehovah's Witnesses to pursue filmmaking. And we know what his masterwork is gonna be. Like we know that once Chris Stuckman makes a film, it will be probably about that. He said it would he would want it to be, you know, a comedy. So as I said at the beginning, I would say like my religious beliefs, right? Just, just to counterpoint his, because he was raised in the Jehovah's Witnesses. He doesn't say what he believes in now, but regardless, I would, I would call myself agnostic. Um, if there is a God, 
he, he's like a force in the universe, you know what I mean? He's the, he's the god of the universe, whatever it is, if there is. I would probably believe no. That's pretty much it. And again, this is just a counterpoint. What he thinks. I love common sense, right? So until there, there's proof of anything, we don't know anything. So I like to go with that. But I also wanted to go into sexual orientation because he ended this video saying that because his the Jehovah Witnesses are so controlling of how you're supposed to think and feel and what you're supposed to do. By the way, I'm getting into serious topics here, viewer. I will be getting into more fun stuff in just a bit. I'm almost done. But uh, so he said at the end, like I said, they're homophobic, transphobic, everything phobic, right? The Jehovah's Witnesses. He is, he admitted to the camera that he is pansexual. And I'm in my late 20s, right? And I fully admit, like, the biggest problem facing our world today is people are not able to admit they're wrong. People don't like to be wrong, especially in the age of Twitter and the internet. Like, your opinion is king, right? Like, my religion is best. Democrats over Republicans, etc., etc. You're like, anyway, your opinion means more than it really does, which is sad. So, the ability to admit you're wrong or that you don't know anything is is huge. It's so important. Man, it's crazy because I put I put like cold wind in here, expecting that it'd be okay. Still not okay. And uh, okay, let's walk a bit. Sorry, I I've barely been playing. I really got to put this in just chatting and uh, and he said like yeah I'm pansexual which means I love all genders right and I'm like wait isn't that bisexual you know is that right so I looked it up pansexual versus bisexual right so bisexual is both genders male female pansexual means all genders whatever you have I'll take it baby whatever you got <laughs> if I love you I'll take it <laughs> and I love that right but I also love how Google the way they do it is by the way I'm just I'm straight heterosexual right um, basic baby basic which you know whatever oops sorry I had the mic there but I love how Google right I wrote that down and you don't have to click on a link to know Google now have put usually puts the answer up top uh, it's, it's curated if you will so I learned that but I did click on one article which was pretty funny because if you're gonna explain anything in metaphor use food food is the easiest thing to explain anything if you can use it you know as a metaphor or as a uh, um, analogy no anyway regardless of the word, word I'm trying to find here and uh, they use ice cream you know <laughs> you could say you like a lot of flavors right Oh, yeah, I like I like most ice cream flavors, right? But uh, I like in, in this case bisexual, right? So I like vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, whatever. But a pansexual likes the weird flavors, man. They'll take pistachio, they'll take they'll take whatever flavor of ice cream you got, even if it's extremely weird and unappetizing. Or jelly beans. Jelly beans is even better because I'll eat the popcorn jelly bean, but the pansexual will eat the vomit jelly bean. You know what I mean? Just because it exists. It is there, you know? I love that. And I got it right away, you know what I mean? Like, of course, the explanation is simple. It's it, two genders versus all genders, but still. So I, I as as a adult in his late 20s, who is extremely open-minded, who is like, you know, I'm open to everything. I'm liberal in that way. Just not knowing what a pansexual is, you know? That's just how it is. Same thing, he said that his wife is demi-pan. And I'm like, what the hell is demi-pan? And demipan means you only have uh, sexual interactions with people you truly connect with. And I'm like, isn't that most human beings? <laughs> Pretty much it just means no one night stands, you know? But still, I found, I found that interesting. So I learned what demipan and pansexual means in a video, again, titled, How I Left the Jehovah's Witnesses to Pursue Filmmaking from Chris Stuckman. His bravery and his... It's, it's a masterpiece of a YouTube video. It's a, it's, it's a masterpiece and it took so much from him for him to do that for us not to take it all in like I have in this video. Um, yeah, I can't believe I talked for more than 20 minutes about this, but that's it. We're done. Again, I apologize if this was long. Again, I will never talk about serious topics like this. Almost never. This is passionate because it's a, a YouTuber I respect. He's given me a perspective that I've never seen or heard of before. 
and it's 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 must learn you know what i mean it really does feel like something everybody should know and now we're done and now we're going to talk about why craven the hunter the spider-man villain who wears a leotard hunting suit whose main purpose in life is to hunt the all the creatures on earth and that's the reason he hunts spider-man he's like dude i hunted lions i hunted whales the only the only prey i have not hunted is the spider-man <laughs> so as ridiculous as that is that man becomes a superhero in this book and it's incredible so i got like a few a few post-it notes just to uh just yeah so yeah, that's the backstory of Craven Hunter, like I just told you, Hunter Extraordinaire. And uh, so yeah, this book is called The Unbreakable Squirrel Girl. Tomorrow I'm going to review big time comics, like I said, Doomsday Clock and The Batman Who Laughs, two masterpieces. And uh, I will do it in 1080p and I will be able to show you straight up panels from the comic. And I'll do the same thing with this, but I'll show it to you in physical form right now because I do want to talk about it. Because this is fun. So Squirrel Girl is a endlessly optimistic hero. She's kind of a joke, a joke, joke hero in the Marvel Universe. She's a troll character because she single-handedly destroyed Thanos, um, Doctor Doom, and uh, Galactus, and you know all, all the most the most powerful villains, Ultron, all the most powerful villains ever in the history of the Marvel Universe. She as jokingly beat them. Um, single-handedly most times it's pretty crazy there's always like a, a caveat there's always like an apostrophe you know what i mean because you can't have you can't have you know uh what's his name the falcon for example you can't have the falcon beat dr doom by himself or or thanos you know it's ridiculous so they they lean into that ridiculousness in this comic and this is volume nine technically 12 12 books like this it's insane how long this series is and craven plays like a supporting role uh, he helped her defeat Ultron, which was like a, a robot T-Rex in uh, the Savage Land. And uh, regardless, he's a friend. Craven the Hunter is a friend to Squirrel Girl in this series. I'm pretty sure like during the, the whole run, he would probably show up and like fight somebody, you know? Fights Daredevil or Spider-Man or whatever. And, uh, you know, he's, he's one of those villains that is not villainous. He just, you know, he's a hunter who wants, who likes to hunt. And he will do whatever he wants to, regardless of if it's right or wrong, right? So this idea tries to play with that. You know, let's push that. So here we go. The entire concept of this story is that the first two issues are borderline dumb. It's straight up an escape room. You know how you can go to an escape room with your friends? You pay like 60 bucks, they put you in a room, you gotta solve it within an hour. That is the premise of this. It's horrible. It's really bad. The first two issues of this are real bad because that's it. It's just them escaping the escape room. So it's her and her friends. So she invites Craven the Hunter, but she also invites her other superhero friends, including Koi Boy, who's like a boy who can talk to fish, Chipmunk Hunk, who's a, you know, a guy with the powers of Chipmunk. It's ridiculous, right? But here's the thing. At the end of it is where I start some show and tell. At the end of it, First of all, this is how Craven is introduced. Again, she invites Craven on the phone. She's like, yo, Craven, you want to come do this escape room with us? Ridiculous. And he's like, sure, got nothing better to do. This is how he arrives. Now, I tried to practice this, but it's kind of hard to show everything. But it's him next to his van. And on his van has like classic graffiti art from like the 80s of him on a leopard with like some hot chick, just like, you know, submissive on a carpet on a tiger carpet, you know, it's ridiculous. And he looks badass just leaning onto this van. So that's again how he's like introducing himself to his friends, to, to Squirrel Girl's friends, right? She's like, she's like, guys, I'm bringing Craven. is that cool? They're like, okay, but you know, isn't Craven a bad guy? Anyway, so next show and tell, uh, this one's just stupid. This is where Squirrel Girl discovers new powers. I don't know why I need to show this, but I don't, I really don't. But essentially, she learns, and I'll read it out real quick, that uh, apparently squirrels... Uh, yeah. Okay. Our human jaw muscles are among the strongest we've got, and they produce around 200 pounds per square inch of pressure, right? That's us. But squirrels, squirrel jaws can produce 7,000 pounds per square inch. So scale that up to human size, and that means that she can literally bite steel or cement. Ridiculous power. <laughs> 
<laughs> they literally get out of the room she's in because Squirrel Girl eats the steel floor and they escape through a hole. It's ridiculous. Just to show you that the, the level of ridiculousness we're dealing with now. So of course they escape the escape room, which was headed by a villain. Who cares? Because here's where we get to the good stuff. They leave the escape room. And because the cops were called, the cops arrive. And, okay, and Craven, after escaping, he's happy, he's had a good experience. So he's like, I want to thank you all today, you know. Uh, all I see before me are friends, old and new, blah, blah, blah. Put her there. He wants to give her a handshake. She forces him to give her a hug, right? And then the cops show up. Cr Craven's on his way to his van, happy, whistling. The cops tackle Craven. And they're like, Cra Craven, Craven's a bad guy. Craven is a, a villain. We got him, you know what I mean? But then Squirrel Girl and like Squirrel Girl and her friends come and they're like, what, what are you doing? Like he was with us in an escape room, we got a villain. Like we did it. Like he, what are you guys doing? This is this is borderline police brutality if we're if we're getting real about it. So because she defended Craven, they all get arrested. And that is literally the end of that issue. Shit, I just lost the page. Like that's the, how that issue ends, is they're all in prison. So Unbreakable Squirrel Girl and her friends, which are all normal. With Craven the Hunter in a jail cell. Crap, I'm losing all my post-its. Man, that means I'm losing all my pages. So yeah, they're in prison. So they're like, okay, so we got to get out of this situation. What are we going to do? We're going to go to court. So they go to court <laughs> to explain that they're innocent. Again, with Craven. They are defended by She-Hulk. She-Hulk is their attorney. She's an attorney. And uh, so while they defend Squirrel Girl and her friends perfectly, Craven the Hunter is much harder to defend because the prosecution brings up all the bad stuff he's done. Like, he's literally killed Spider-Man. He's hurt Daredevil. He's done all these things that everybody knows in the populace because at this point, you know, people know the heroes and villains. They're not as secretive as they are, especially not Craven who wears a le leotard suit naked running around in New York City, you know? So they all get acquitted except for Craven. They're all like, okay, you're all not guilty, but Craven, you're guilty, and we're gonna lock you away forever, you know? And everybody extremely sad and disappointed, they're like, no. And then Craven knew this was gonna happen. So this is at the bottom right here. So like she goes, ah, oh, Craven. And he's like, I tried. Craven goes, I tried Belka. Belka is what he calls her. He breaks his handcuffs, runs away, he escapes. Because that's his only option at that point, right? Again, I know this is ridiculous, me recapping this, and I won't do this often. I'm just doing it now because you don't necessarily have to read this, but I do want to share this story because it's really that good. And it's a culmination of 10 traits. I'm sorry I'm not playing the game. I really am. So I will be putting in just chatting, but we'll be playing the game. We got 400 games, 400 days to play this game. So trust me, the game will be played. Especially since I do this daily, and this is worth it. So. They run after Craven. They're like, "Where is he?" Right? Oh, this is this is where it gets good. Okay. So Craven's outside. He's in an alleyway. He looks up at a bird in the sky and he says, "Freedom." And somebody says, "That's far enough, Craven." And right behind him is Spider-Man. Spider-Man does not know that Craven just helped Squirrel Girl and just captured villains and was just arrested and was proven not guilty. All the stuff that's happened so far, Spider-Man does not know this. All that Spider-Man knows is that Craven is a is a long and must like they fight over and over, man. He's fought Craven like probably ten times by now. And not only that, but he knows that he escaped. Like, I don't know if he has police scanners or whatever, but Craven's not supposed to be free. So, unfortunately, as sad as it is, Craven and Spider-Man fight, even though Craven has now been proven to be a good guy. Next issue opens. Big double spread, Craven, Spider-Man, fighting. Again, I will show all of this tomorrow in full screen. And uh, with Squirrel Girl arriving, being like, no, you know what I mean? Like literally screaming no. I said no as a joke, but that's literally what she says. So Spider-Man and Craven are fighting. So, so the whole issue then becomes Squirrel Girl not only defending Craven's from Spider-Man's attacks, like she t literally takes a full cartridge of web shooters with her tail, etc, etc. And she convinces him that Craven is now a good guy. And that, unfortunately, he has to escape because there's no way that the uh, community will see him as she sees him, which is a hero, you know? I know. Oof. It's emotional. Because again, this is a culmination of everything. 
So she finally gets that handshake, and you know, after convincing Spider-Man that to let him go this one time. Uh, here we go. Craven says, "You have challenged me to live up to this new way few have. No, sorry, to live up to this in a way few have, in a life in which I have not known many. Belka, you are a true friend." And big hug, big big hug, very powerful. You know, this is the redemption of Craven. Ah, anyway, they hear the police. She says, "You better go." He leaves. And uh, you end the issue on just a nice piece of a bird flying through New York City, right? It's just a nice ending to Craven's full face turn into a superhero. And again, probably only in this comic book. Like, I'm guessing he does show up in a villain role somewhere else. That's comics for you, you know? What what goes stays the same, it's really... Anyway, but here you go. This is, this is why I'm showing this to you. This is why I'm talking to you this in the first place. They have two extra pages after the letter section. This never happens. post credit scene. Okay, it's in the dark. There's crime happening. The cops, they're like, Hey, look! Spider-Man put a villain on the lamppost for us, like he always does. And they read the note, which would normally say, From your friendly neighborhood, Spider-Man. And it says, Attention police. The note's different. They read the note. They don't say what the, the note says, but who's the unhuntable Sergei? Sergei is his name. And then you get this shot. Which is a classic play on the Batman the Animated Series at the end of the credits. Which is Batman draped on a skyscraper with the lightning shooting. But it's Craven with a mask. Just... Just looking... Swole, baby. Anyway. This is the true... The true... The true way Craven became a hero. So yeah, Unbreakable Squirrel Girl. Amazing stuff. Again, when I talk comics, I won't do it like this. I only did it like this because it's something I have to talk about. And uh, so yeah, we'll talk about actual Masterpiece comics tomorrow. Very excited to do so. And uh, to be honest, I think I'll end it here. I was supposed to talk about Valhalla, but we talked about serious topics. I'm dying of heat, and yeah. Anyway, we'll talk Valhalla some other time. Plus I'm just keep on shrugging along, you know? So yeah, tomorrow. Big stuff for this game. I'm going to talk about two of the best comics I've read in the last 10 years. Big, big deal. Plus, I'll be able to show to you full screen in all of their glory. Uh, Doomsday Clock, sequel to The Watchmen, and The Batman Who Laughs, which is Scott Schneider's masterpiece. He wrote everything. He wrote Death of the Family. He wrote uh, The Court of Owls, which everybody talks about. You know, he wrote uh, Endgame and, like, anyway. Point is, huge writer. So, so yeah, that's tomorrow. And that's pretty much it. So as always, look, watch that Chris Stuckman video. I know I talked about it a lot, but trust me, it's nothing from my mouth compared to his. So Chris Stuckman on YouTube, um, how I left the Jehovah's Witnesses to pursue filmmaking. Incredible stuff. You have to watch it. And you don't have to, but you should, because it, you will learn so much from something so horrible. And uh, that's pretty much it. As always, you'll get more fun and different topics every day. And uh, I'll try every day every day i'll try not to miss any days but we'll see how it goes so until next time love you guys love and respect peace